The Joint Improvised Explosive Device Defeat Organization was created at the height of the Iraq War in 2006 to protect U.S. troops against the deadliest weapon they face. With a staff of more than 2,000 and a budget of $1.9 billion, JIDO has been developing new technologies, tactics, processes, as well as intelligence to help keep up with and stay ahead of rapid enemy advances. Joining us today is JIDO's Director, Lieutenant General Michael Barbero. Sir? Great to have you back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So uh, it's been a while since you last joined sure. us. Uh, it's fighting season again in Afghanistan. Uh, recently was a very deadly week for both right. U.S. troops, five killed, and three British troops as well killed right. at the hands of IEDs. How is the threat evolving, and to the extent you can discuss it, what are some of the newer ways that we're looking to tackle it? Sure. Well, let me just, uh, as I look over the last 12 months, there has been an evolution in the fight. But some things remain constant. First, it's still an IED fight. Sixty-plus percent of our, our casualties come from the IED. And still homemade explosives. 88 to 85 percent of the IDs are made with fertilizer and other homemade products. Just as we saw in Boston, it's increasingly an off-the-shelf, dual-use component fight that we're in. Um, with, with, with directions and instructions you can find easily yeah, on the Internet. You can find anywhere, that's right. And, and this, this flat, virtual way they share tactics, techniques, procedures remains, uh, uh, remains in place. Over the last 12 months, we've had a 32 percent drop in the number of troops on the ground. Uh, yet we've only seen a 7% drop in the number of IDs. So this, this uh, assumption that as we drop the number of, uh, of troopers on the ground that the ID threat would, would uh, lessen uh, has not borne born out. So it's still the weapon of choice. Um, however, over the last 12 months, we've dropped our casualty rates by 50% for a number of reasons uh, that, I can, that I can go into. Um, for example, what are some of the Well, reasons? I mean, we've got very, ex the first one I always say is we have uh, commanders and troopers on the ground who get it. As one commander said to me, it's not a case of the IED on the battlefield, the IED is the battlefield, and we get it. And our ability to understand threat networks and to be able to attack them uh, across their entire supply chain has improved. You also have an increase of Afghan security forces in the fight. They're taking the lead. And, they, and they're they, taking some of the casualties. They're as taking well. the casualties. One of the things that is troubling is the rise and the, the number of attacks on them. Um, it's up 45 percent over the last year, and their casualty rates have also increased. So we have a full court press uh, led by uh, Deputy Secretary of Defense to see what we can do to, to enable them. Um, any any progress? And one of the things that we discussed before was to be able to get. Uh, the fertilizer industry to put right. dyes into ammonium nitrate right. and the other fertilizers in order to be able to track it. A lot of this stuff comes from Pakistan. Have you had any progress right. in getting Pakistani suppliers to get with that particular program? I was in Pakistan on Monday and okay. had discussions with uh, Pakistan military, ministries, and the fertilizer industry. And uh, you, you're, you're correct. Uh, the, the networks are operating from Pakistan. The components, the fertilizer, uh, calcium ammonium nitrate is the main charge in most of the IDs, comes from the factories in, in Pakistan. However, um, I'm, I'm optimistic. Uh, we, we signed a military-to-military -military framework of cooperation with the Pakistan military to share and work together on this problem. Uh, the, recently, the fertilizer industry, Fatima Group, has made and taken a number of steps. They pulled calcium ammonium nitrate from, the, from some of the provinces. For us, What's important, they pulled it from Baluchistan, which is, we think, is the main avenue into Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. They've agreed to, um, to they, they think they've come up with a reformulation of a less detonable composition of CAN, and they've agreed to joint testing, which we're going to do next month. Um, they've agreed to have uh, inspectors from the Commerce Department come in and look at their, their efforts to in increase the product security. So overall, very big steps. Big steps. Uh, they've joined the International Fertilizer Association voluntarily, and which makes them subject to audits of their product security. So overall, uh, recently, a lot of progress with uh, Pakistan military and from, from the fertilizer industry. But it's still a tough, tough, tough challenge. There, there is a sense that we're, we're obviously draw, we are going to be drawing right. down from, from Afghanistan, and we're going to stay in the country only at the invitation of the of the Afghans. And I know mm -hmm. that we're trying to sort out is it 2,000 or 12,000 right. or how many troops stay in the country. But everybody now is looking for lasting lessons, and how many mm -hmm. of those lessons get inculcated into the permanent sure. curriculum from a coin standpoint, from counterinsurgency standpoint. Um, what are some of the IED lessons that have to really get right. ingrained across the force uh, in a more lasting way from your Well, I mean, these networks, these threat networks uh, that we're confronting in Afghanistan and we're seeing migrate and proliferate globally are here to stay. 
uh, Al Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, Boko Haram, Al Shabaab, Al Qaeda in Iraq has become a franchise where they're now exporting expertise and technology. We're seeing a growth in Syria. So we must understand that these networks are here to stay. They migrate. They, you know, we march to the sound of the guns. They march to the signs of insecurity. And they take the IED with them. So they're here to stay. So we, and they're agile, flat, and they operate virtually, as you said, on the internet. Uh, their command and control is the internet and social media. We must dominate that, their command and control system and understand that. The other lesson learned is we have to respond and be as flat and agile as they are. So rapid acquisition, they have it. I'm not sure we do yet. So right. we, might, we have to invest in that. Um, let me ask you, what's the impact of sequester and the reprogramming request that's going to cut $275 million mm -hmm. from your budget? Well, we've done a number of steps to, you know, we, we understand the environment in which we're operating, and we've taken a number of steps to be more efficient. We've 25% uh, cut in our personnel and operating expenses. We've canceled $280 million of programs that were not performing or weren't needed just this year alone, which has allowed us to reprogram that internally into other programs. Sequestration has that effect. Um, the, the continuing resolution did have an effect on our funding, but we're, we're all funded through operational contingency funds, so it hasn't had the, as great effect as, as the services. We're in the midst of a drawdown, and there are those people who say that, look, JIDO was created for a specific cause. We're going to be leaving Afghanistan. They should be disbanded, and as parts put into other organizations, some people say the rapid equipment right. force in the Army, should parts of it should go in there. What's the argument to keep the organization intact? And if you're going to break it up, what's the right way to break it up? Um, well, I disagree with breaking it up. And, uh, I would suspect so. Yeah, you, you would. But I know in 2003, I was in Iraq riding around in an unarmored -up Humvee with my 9 mil in my lap, hoping I didn't get hit with something. And we've come so far. Uh, the greatest argument for why we need to stay on this is the enemy will. It is a weapon of choice. Outside of Afghanistan, every month there are 700 IED events. Syria has grown, uh, Northern uh, Africa, Colombia, Pakistan, India. Yeah, I could go on and on. So if we have an enemy who's investing in this, in this weapon and this technology, we need to stay abreast if not in front of them. And I think disaggregating this capability we've built is the wrong answer. Sir, thanks very much for joining us. Thank and you. Congratulations on your retirement. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks. Up next, scholarships from...